Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Helene and I've been doing, it's funny, people ask me how long I've been doing sound healing and I really think I've been doing sound healing my whole life. So um, I was singing and dancing when I was very young for anyone who would listen, anyone who would be there and uh, sound just kind of came very naturally to who I am. But in this particular capacity, with the bowls and the tuning forks and really like doing the channeling um, with my voice, that's been something that's only been happening for about a year in this particular capacity. Uh, I've been doing craniosacral work um, and massage and other types of healing modalities for the past four or five years. More professionally, I made a switch from working in administration in the music industry. and um, and. Now, this whole other realm is where all these things come together and I've developed workshops around sound. I just recorded a CD um, that's called Elemental Alchemy that was released in the summer. And I did it with a friend of mine that plays the violin and another friend that plays drums and it works through the elements. So it goes through ether, air, water, earth and fire, which is a form of polarity therapy, which is a form of body work mm -hmm. um, uh, that I've studied. And it takes people through that process and I developed workshops around that process uh, so that people can work through the elements and manifest things in their lives, mm -hmm. creatively and otherwise. And mm -hmm. the sound itself, um, I, I also learned to do shiatsu when I was young. And so the intuition of just knowing where people needed to be touched or where people needed mm -hmm. to be was something that came to me very naturally. Mm -hmm. And so with sound, it's a similar thing. I feel like what happens in the craniosacral world where you're tapping into the nervous system, what happens in sound is that you're tapping into a bigger frequency of like the amount of people in the room. Even if it's just one person, right. it can be like super intense. The, the voice, the bulls, the gong can move stuff in people. It can move things mm -hmm. in their bodies. Mm -hmm. It can feel like someone's touching you. It can feel like right. you're getting body work but it's happening through the sound. The sound itself is physical matter. Right. So sound waves are physical matter. We just mm -hmm. can't see them, mm -hmm. and, but we can feel them. And right. that's why when we hear like a loud noise or something, it makes right. us jump because it actually is something physical that's touching our bodies. Mm -hmm. And the way that these instruments are developed, there are very specific intention behind the instruments where there's the purity of the tone and the mm -hmm. crystal of the quartz and, and all the materials that they're made with that have specific intentions. And when you have bowls that are tuned to different frequencies, you not only carry the pitch that are right. associated with different chakras in the body, you're, uh, you have what's created um, called binaural beats. Mm -hmm. pitches that are very close together produce that kind of bouncing where it goes rrr, 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 mm -hmm. or the, like the sound that you hear and what that is is it mimics different brain wave states so alpha delta theta waves higher level states of meditation so people often go into a dreamlike state or a trance mm -hmm. when they're hearing sound because the sound is taking them to a different space in the brain than where we are day to day Right, because it's very, very, uh, I learned a long time ago through John Bollier that the vibration can tune your nervous system, which is what I see when it's so much noise, right, and all. The sound is so important. Now, how do you recommend that people can use your system and, and what matters? What is it that they can do at home with your, with your sound? Uh, in terms of what they can do, I mean, I do have a CD it's right. on iTunes right. and Amazon, and that works through the sure. elements. But in terms of even themselves, um, there are a few things that I do, like a program that I'm developing called Unlocking Your Inner Voice. Mm. It's actually to connect with right. the voice or the instrument. I mean, the voice is the primary instrument. That's mm. the thing that drives us as human beings, is our mm -hmm. voice. Like tribal cultures, they all sing, they all dance. Right. You know, it's not just like something that the artistic person does or the musically gifted person. It's everybody has that connection right. and we've lost that connection. So I would say if anybody has the sound, if you can't afford to buy a bowl right now or you can't do that, it's just to like connect with your own. And it can be very uncomfortable, which is why mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to have somebody there. Mm -hmm. But even like primal screaming, like screaming right. into a towel or something, right. just opening up the mechanism of expression mm -hmm. And um, finding a way to sing, to express, to whatever on your own. 
Um, I think that the biggest thing, well, you know, the chakra system is what it is. Like, I mean, I have this bowl is tuned to the pitch of C, mm -hmm. which is considered the base, the root chakra is, mm -hmm. is the C. And, um, and so that's one thing you can do. It's like, mm -hmm. and you can even um, download drone sounds of the crystal bowls that mm. I found like on Amazon and iTunes and stuff. And so that's one thing you can do. And sometimes it's just as simple as like just going in the earth and putting your feet in right. the ground. Because we Grounded. lose touch with that in our day-to-day -day mm -hmm. being. And I think with sound for sure, it's the sea, it's anything like actually um, like drumming and stuff, like mm. things, the dancing that can mm -hmm. help get people really like grounded. in their bodies and mm. grounded. And, you know, because so many times I find people that do healing work are sometimes so, even, you know, where you say everyday life mm. stress is up here, but people that do healing work especially are sometimes like way in the clouds sometimes. And you mm. can't actually make things happen in the world right. if you're only up here. Mm -hmm. You have to be in your body. You right. have to be in your mind. Right. And so it's a question of making all of it work. Mm -hmm. And for the stress, it's like just, it's so hard sometimes because people are so used to doing all the time that the mm -hmm. idea of even coming to the sound bath and laying down for an hour and 15 minutes, they're like, oh, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time. It's a mantra. Yeah. And so I think it's just people really recognizing that self-care is really important. And Huge. Whether, yeah, and so, like, I'm very open, like, sound should, you know, can a affect everybody on mm -hmm. some level, mm -hmm. whether this context works for everyone. Right. Because it can also, I, I go twice a week, I do sound baths and sound therapy work at a teenage rehab clinic in Malibu. Mm. And it's really profound working with these um, teenagers who are really actually quite open and tapped in and mm -hmm. like amazing. Mm -hmm. But they are just are, have these struggles like at right. such a young age. And the mm -hmm. sound can sometimes, they love it. And then sometimes you have some that can't stand, like they can't, they're not ready to go that inward yet. Right. So I think that it's just a bigger thing of society that more people doing sound and seeing more sound baths and more people doing this work, mm -hmm. which is happening now. And mm -hmm. it's really amazing because that is what's going to start to shift things. Right. Where you think of yoga 25 years ago, people were like, oh, yoga? Like, you know, it was something right. very new and right. people were not as tapped in. Where now everybody knows about yoga. Right. Right. Sound, I feel like, is kind of that next thing that's coming out of mm -hmm. this place because it really does relax people. Right, and, absolutely. And it's helping the medical community too. I mean, you know, people don't really realize like ultrasound. Right. It's done with sound waves. You know, these right. things like sound is already in the medical community. They just don't talk about it the same way. Absolutely, yeah. Because I can hear my nervous system sound. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the yogis do that. Mm -hmm. They tune in to, to their sounds and all the spheres, right? Yeah, and it's also, um, sometimes I always tell people, because when you're doing a sound bath, especially when you live in a city, mm. you have other extraneous noises, because you never really, you know, unless you're in a soundproof studio, you don't, you always are going right. to hear some extraneous noise, whether it be the street or a siren or like something right. else. But what it is, is it starts to teach you to allow everything to be part of that space. And I remember, um, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but there was a there was a Paulo Coelho book um, that was about that. That actually the way that this person was listening, 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 mm. could never hear this sirens or thing he was like listening for these bells. Mm -hmm. And finally, when he let all of the sounds be part of that experience, mm. he was able to hear things. I mean, that's wow. a microcosm of why well, I, right. I have to remember which book it was, but. Um, that is something also the uh, Kundalini yoga community with Satnam mm. or Sayan, which is right. another version of mm -hmm. like where you are just letting everything be in the space and tuning into it. And, mm. and craniosacral work has the same thing. You're yes, meeting yeah. that yeah. moment and that person in that time. Mm -hmm. And you know, they can't heal unless they're ready to go into the process. Like mm -hmm. you can only hold space for someone and you can help. Mm -hmm 
but you can't fix anybody. It's like right. that's the process of growth. And it's the same thing with sound and mm -hmm. how it can sometimes really agitate people and people think, oh, I'm receiving it wrong or something's right. wrong. And I'm like, no, the agitation's coming up because it's ready to release. Yeah. So that's really important when you're doing a sound workshop, when you're doing sound baths, when you people are new, it's really important to tell them that because mm -hmm. a lot of times they're like, I don't know, I didn't like that because they don't like what's coming up for them. Right. And if nobody tells them that that's something that can right. happen, the right. sound amplifies and makes things bigger, mm -hmm. then people don't know. Right. Because yeah. they've used it. I mean, they have used the, the lack of sound to drive people crazy. Mm -hmm. They have used different kinds of sounds in war or... Yeah, to make uh, people like... To absolutely, mm -hmm. to break them down. It's a very powerful thing. I mean, and we made out of three-quarter water, so the vibration in the water of any sound is pretty profound. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.